Hey friends, Pays and Glue here. It has been a moment since I released a video last. Uh, a lot of things have been happening this summer that I can't quite share yet, but hopefully soon. Uh, in the meantime, I really wanted to get out a video this fall to kind of like get back in the groove. So I thought that I would share the process of the fairy costume that I just made for a photo shoot with some friends. I really challenged myself to stick to a budget and a timeline, both of which I am not super good at doing normally. So this was a good exercise in uh, sticking to both of those things and really challenging myself to just get her done. I did spend a fair amount of time on Yield Pinterest doing some research, trying to figure out kind of like what the general idea of my fairy design was gonna be. But then I just kind of went out to the thrift store and just like kind of went wild. I kind of knew I wanted an autumnal theme and it kind of depended on what I could find in the store for a good price. And then that more than anything kind of sparked my imagination and then we kind of just went from there okay so i have been to the thrift store and i found this uh pretty cute dress actually for like 20 bucks it's kind of a lot for a thrift store but that's cool uh definitely too small for me so that's fun um i'm gonna try to dye it for sure it's polyester so we're gonna do some experimenting with uh synthetic dyes which i have not actually used in the past so we'll see about that it's gonna be hard to get the water hot enough mostly so that i'm gonna do this week and then i had some pretty good luck at the thrift store getting some uh fall foliage situation some of these are like reeds already that i'm gonna take apart some of them were just bare stems so that's super helpful um, probably spent one is literally in a vase that I will dismember. Um, got all these for about 20 bucks. So that's a pretty good price for flowers, which are super expensive if you buy them new. So thrift stores are always good for that. Cellophane, because we're going to try to make those wings. The dye, the Elmer's spray adhesive is also for the wings, as is the floral tape. I'm trying to buy things secondhand when I can, but sometimes with supplies like this you gotta head to the craft store. So budget wise, I'm doing well. And we're gonna start working on this baby real soon. So long story short, I definitely did not get the water hot enough to dye polyester fabric. You really need to have like nearly boiling water, but I don't have a pot big enough to do it on the stove top. So I was relegated to a giant plastic bin in my basement. Uh, as we can see, the lace dyed like a champ, and the polyester silk kind of tinted, but it didn't get quite as dark as I would have hoped it would. Uh, but at least we kind of lost the like weird pinky color that the dress was, because that looks seriously terrible on me. So this is much better. Um, I wanted the dress to be a little bit darker so we can see that I am using um, some fabric medium and acrylic paints. Uh, which is the color shift acrylics from plaid to paint into the waist to kind of bring that color of the lace down into the skirt to kind of marry the two together a little bit. Um, the color shift paint actually kind of left a really cool kind of like sparkly metallic look to it, which I wasn't really anticipating being able to see the color shift texture as much as you could but actually it had been really cool especially under the sunlight so highly recommend that it did make the silk a little bit stiffer than I would have liked even with the fabric medium but it was acrylic paint so what are you going to do uh, again because I'm trying to stick to a budget with this project I did not want to buy any fabric specific paints those are pretty expensive and I didn't want to add to my shopping list so here we are this ended up being fine and uh, I didn't paint into the bottom of the skirt so that it still kind of kept some movement when I was walking around outside and it was all fine. Then it was time for the fun part, which is of course putting all the flowers on the dress. I dismantled all the floral stems that I had picked up at the thrift store and started placing things using safety pins to kind of keep them in place as I worked. I kind of placed things organically 
around the curves of the body, keeping in mind that I do have arms and they needed a place to go that wasn't going to be super pokey with all the, the flower stems and everything. So I kind of kept them away from the sides of the dress. Um, in my normal work mode, I would have stitched everything down to the dress, but that would take about 1 million years. And again, time was of the essence. So I ended up using a mix of tiny safety pins from the inside of the dress and thin floral wire to hold everything together. It's not the most secure, but I didn't lose any pieces. And I feel like I have like quite a few wears left on this before anything would start falling off. So it was much faster than sewing and a lot less messy than any kind of glue. So like maybe the better choice from the beginning. I don't know. This was a good experiment. So flower crown time, the penultimate part of any good fairy design. I made a base of millinery wire that fit my head plus my wig and then pinned it to a head form. Then I just kind of went to town with flowers. I started with a kind of like twiggy branchy swag thing that was part of a larger piece I picked up and then started attaching other floral pieces to the wire and twigs. I started using hot glue but ended up mostly using floral wire because hot glue just like really does not like to stick to plastic flowers and they were just falling off. I would kind of place the flowers and stems until I kind of like what was happening and then I would wire those pieces down. Uh, I kind of worked in quadrants and I tried to keep things sort of symmetrical and organic sort of way. I did end up adding horsehair loops with hot glue to the inside of the crown after I was done to make sure that it stayed um, and didn't slide out of my wig. Mostly I wanted to make sure that the crown front masked the hard edge of my wig. Even though it was a hard front wig, the wig was actually really lovely for like a $20 wig and it looked great right out of the bag. I ended up doing a little half twist to keep the front out of my eyes and then the crown could kind of sit on top of the twist and keep in place. I will link the wig I bought below in the description. Okay, we're all here for the wings, y'all. I got you. Um, I watched a few different tutorials on wing making that I will either link above or into the description. I used 16 gauge galvanized wire that I bought at the hardware store and one pack was plenty for both sides of the wings. I did wear gloves just to keep the edges from poking me and also safety glasses after the first two few times that I whipped the wire ends around like an idiot and almost put my eye out. 
I started by shaping the wire around the edge of my drawn wing shape, making sure to leave a long enough tail at the middle. Then I started making the shapes within the wings, again following my design. On the longer veins, I used a long enough wire that would meet the other ends at the middle and give the wing enough rigidity to hold up with the weight, but I tried to be cognizant of the overall weight that I was adding to each vein as I went along. I started using the floral tape that I had purchased, but quickly just switched over to masking tape, which was faster and it seemed to be stronger. I also ended up doubling up the wire on the top edge of the wing to give it a little bit more rigidity. making both wings I sprayed the wing wires with black spray paint so everything was the same color. Some of my tape joints did end up being a little bit bulky after being covered with the cellophane so I probably could have done a little bit care more careful job wrapping the joints with the tape. Then we were ready for the cellophane layers. Uh, this is definitely a little bit of a learning curve. I'm showing you wing number two because that one went a little bit smoother. Definitely weigh down the corners of your cellophane to keep them from flipping up and sticking to them themselves. And also make sure that your surface is free from lint and other debris. So uh, you're going to spray the cell cellophane layer. You're going to lay the wing down on the cellophane and then carefully spray more glue along one edge of the wing. I learned that the spray glue needed to be laid down in small areas because it would dry too fast if I tried to do the whole thing at one time. So then you're gonna lay your second roll of cellophane down and press the two layers together, trying to get the space between the wires as flat as possible. Spray your next section and carefully roll the cellophane over and repeat until the wing is covered. Try not to over apply the glue because it leaves kind of like a smushy kind of blob between the two layers and then that kind of causes problems later. 
After the wing is covered and the glue is dry, you can cut around the edge of your wing. Leave around half an inch around the edge of the wires. Then you're gonna put your respirator on. And I'm not talking about a dust mask, I'm talking about a respirator with the correct vapor cartridge. I'm also doing this in my basement, away from other people and pets with the windows open and an exhaust fan running. You are melting plastic, nobody wants to breathe that in. Also, heating galvanized steel is also apparently very bad. Please take this seriously. This is a fairy costume. It is literally not worth it to skimp on the safety measures. This is your body and your health. Thank you for coming to my public service announcement. But anyway, use a lighter to carefully, carefully melt the edges of the cellophane so that they form an interesting and organic shape. Some of the edges will melt right to the edge of the wire, but you want to try to keep a little edge to sandwich the wire and keep it in place. Be really careful to use the edge of the flame and not the tip. The cellophane will catch fire very easily and burn extremely quickly, making large holes in your wings that you may not want. Also, like maybe starting a fire. I ended up making some artistic holes in the edges of the wings to make them a little bit more organic looking, but I'd be really careful not to go too far. After I was done shaping the edges, I used a heat gun, still wearing my respirator, my friends, to do a final heat seal. I hit the cellophane with the heat gun until I could kind of see it shrink and wrinkle, and then I used my hand to smooth it down. The heat gun seems to help the two layers kind of melt into each other and gives the cellophane an interesting organic texture that I think is more attractive than my like not great attempts at getting a very smooth finish the first time. Okay, so I did not film the part where I actually put the two wings together. Apologize for that. Um, kind of what I did was after the wings were all cellophane together, then I've had all these spokes sticking out the middle, right? So then I sort of twisted them around each other and uh, tried to think about like what was a stable way of attaching them. So. I'm not an engineer, but it made sense to, instead of just having like two spokes going down that they need to be attached to each other across. And then if they had like a crossbar, then that would be the most helpful. So kind of like trimmed the wires as I needed to, wrapped things together using the masking tape. And then there's actually two separate loops of wires going down into the back. So there's this front one here and then there's also one that attaches to the um, fabric kind of panel that slides down in the back of the dress. Um, I can't put the dress on because I've padded this dress form out to be too big but the dress goes over this kind of like put the dress on don't lace it up all the way slide the wings in the back and then lace the dress up really tightly on your back to kind of keep it together and it did stay kind of surprisingly better than I thought it was going to. I thought it was gonna kind of like want to pull back a little bit, but it was pretty good. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like. And then you can see like the little holes that I, um, that I burned in. I tried to be sort of like generally symmetrical where, where they were placed, but then not be too precious about the exactness of it. So this is after one wear. I would say it held it together pretty well, nothing broke. Maybe some of the cellophane like kind of pulled away a little bit. Um, but again, these were fast, cheap, and will definitely hold together for a couple wears at least. So I'm looking forward to wearing these again in the future.